morning welcome to my youtube channel uh, thank you for joining me so for my first tutorial i thought i would just do um a simple horse eye so i've done the line art which i've scanned in and i'll link below for you um, so that you're able to use it i'll also um, list below any pencils that i use and also the paper so i'm using the saunders waterford hot press watercolor paper this is 640 GSM and I'm using the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. Um, I used to use the Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper in the same weight but um, they've changed the texture and not really got on with it very well. So I did a bit of research and they seem to have recommended this one. So I did one of the piece on it the other day. To give it a go and really really liked it it's so lovely and smooth um but it's still got the the thickness there to to get the layers down so i'm just going to get going with this now so i'll just start to rub out some of the lines so i'm just going to start with this top edge here and then i've just got um, just a soft soft brush just to brush away um, any pieces from the rubber then the first pencil I use, I quite often use this for sort of outlining, it's um, it's the dark sepia, if you can see that. So um, this is say from the Faber-Castell range. So it's kind of a, it's sort of like a brownie black, so it's not quite as harsh as the black, so it's great for sort of outlining um, your darker areas like that. So I'm just going to start off here and lay down again this is just roughly and then come a bit further down here as well Follows that down. Around to the bottom here. So always make sure your pencil's really as sharp as you can get it for this piece. Um, I use the the best pencil sharpener I've found, again this is off recommendation, is the KUM Masterpiece Sharpener. Um, and obviously get replacement blades, I get through them quite quite quickly. Um, but it's definitely one of the best ones I've tried. Um, you know, you can really get a good sharp point for the more detailed work and, and outlining. You can get it on, I think Jackson's do it. I can't remember where I got mine from. So we can go in dark with this once we've got the sort of other areas down. Um, but it's just good to sort of get it all roughly, roughly down really. This paper does just take the pencil really nicely. So I'm just trying to get the, if you, if you can see the sort of bit of light reflection just here and this again we'll go in darker a bit later this is kind of a dark thicker line alongside this reflection Okay, 
and then it goes very dark into here um, so it's darker under here so we'll just get that in Sorry if I keep knocking the camera. <laughs> Not used to doing this yet. <laughs> so along here is quite a tight, tight sort of reflection line really. So a bit across there. So the nice thing about these polychromos as well is you can actually rub them out, obviously if you've, if you've not gone in too heavy. Um, they're quite forgiving really. Okay, and again we've got a bit of reflection around here. So I'm just always looking back at the reference photo because you know you really need to make sure you're not missing any any sort of vital bits that you know you're really going to notice and really help make it pop out. So you're just sort of mapping it out at this stage and then I'm going up here. And then um, I am just using the eraser on one of the mechanical pencils but a really good eraser to have in your box is the Tombow um, Mono Zero Eraser. Um, you just buy the replacement erasers for inside and then if you've got a craft knife, um, sort of scalpel type knife, um, I just always just take the end off and it's great for kind of precision erasing so you know sort of areas like the reflection there if you wanted to just neaten that up a bit or it's great for taking outline out it's really really handy to have in your box so definitely recommend getting one of those um so i'm just going to and i always before i use my razor i always just have a piece of paper under my hand so i just check it because obviously if you've taken some pencil out that's darker sometimes that can then transfer onto the paper so just be careful before you do use the eraser <laughs> so I just I thought I'd do an eye because I just feel like whatever animal I draw, um, you know, the eyes really make it them. You can really sort of see their character and their soul through it. So I feel like if you get the eyes right, you'll have pretty much nailed it. <laughs> um, and I mean, I always say, you know, the better the picture, the better the, like, the reference photo that you're given the better the portrait will be. So it makes your life a lot easier if you've got a good reference photo. Um, so one thing I do say is don't be afraid to keep going back to clients. You know, if they keep sending, um, you know, rubbish photos, don't be afraid to keep going back to them because at the end of the day, you know, it's in their best interest really because like I said, the better the picture, the better the portrait. So you know don't ever be afraid to keep going back to them and if it's not right just say it's you know you can't do it or I know it's difficult sometimes you know you'll be doing a piece from you know after a pet's passed away so it's not always the easiest um thing you know in that situation you know if they're really wanting it done I'll say look I'm going to do the best I can but you know I will just say that the the photo isn't great so you know I'll do my best but I can't always 
you know you can't draw what's not there at the end of the day so you've just got to do your best it can be so tricky though but I think actually clients appreciate it more when you say to them you know I can't can't really work with that you know the lighting's not quite right or um and also sometimes the sort of pose that the animal's giving I'll I'll say you know does is that sort of true to them and you know I drew a Labrador a while ago and she had this lovely like really sad bless her this really sort of sad puppy look um you know ears sort of flapped down and just really sad um and I said to the owner you know is this is this sort of the best photo and he said I know I know what it looks like but that's just her look um so you know sometimes just asking questions like that as well just make sure it does show show the true liking of the animal and you know really shows their character off because at the end of the day that's what you're trying to do I don't always rub the line completely out because yeah especially with sort of areas of high detail you know you're working kind of quite tight lines here where you've got reflections so um, yeah, you can always go over it it's easier to make it darker than it is to make it lighter so always just go in softer I do find this bit really hard sometimes because I'm quite heavy handed <laughs> so um, I don't find, always find this the easiest of things to do so down here there's kind of a white in between these lines So I am just going to go in a bit darker now on the line of the actual sort of eyeball and then we'll come back to the outer area a bit later. There's something about a horse's eyes, they're just so deep and sort of soulful, aren't they? Right, so I'm going to go in to the actual eye now. Again, just looking back at the reference photo. Okay, so this bit here, as you can see from the reference, it's sort of a bluey-white reflection. So we've marked that out, so we'll come back to that in a sec. Um, so we'll just take this bit out. Okay, and I just kind of lightly take it off enough to 
take it away but so we can still see where we're going. And I'm just lightly, lightly mapping this in. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to start off at the top here, so in this sort of bluey white area, so I've got sky blue, so I'm just going to start with that, so I'm just going to make sure it's really sharp. Go in with cold grey one first. Okay, so I'm just going to just gently circle because this is only going to be a very subtle, subtle layer. over with the sky blue so I almost feel like this kind of it's almost kind of glowing with the blue it's very very subtle really It's actually a bit darker through here, so I'll just go back over with the cold grey one again. And then there are actually some very slight eyelash lines across there, so um, I'm going to do that after. So then in here, it's quite dark, sort of dark brown, so I think I'm going to go in with... Um, burnt umber okay I'll keep snapping the end of them nearly trouble sometimes when you get them so sharp and pointy you only slightly catch them that's it, you've snapped it off. So, before I go in with the burnt umber, I'm going to put a layer of ivory um, just down first. 
but it's all about building up the layers so I'm just going to go in really gently through here like I said earlier you can always go in heavier it's much easier if you start off lighter it's much easier to make it darker than it is to make it lighter so um, you're better off sort of going in like this just sort of circular motions just smoothing the paper out and then actually I think I'm going to put a layer of burnt ochre down it's because there's a sort of an orange tinge coming through isn't there a bit dark sort of a slight bit darker across this top bit here okay and then I'm going to go in with the burnt umber so I'm just going to start my way around the edge just sort of against the line here or just sort of alongside it and then right round the edge sort of working my way in just very small soft very gentle light circles I'm just going to go in with a slightly heavier pressure now. Um, as if you know, yes, it is very, very dark. definitely a lot darker along this top edge and down to here so really working that in and then sort of blending it down if that makes sense Just going back along that edge. And then I think what we'll do is I'll get the dark sepia again that I used for the outline. Just because like I said that's it's kind of a brownie black, so I'm just gonna darken up this edge with my dark sepia. I think this paper is going to take a lot more layers than the Fabriano. Um, let's darker down here. It's quite sort of a spongy feeling paper. But I do feel like there's a lot, a lot to sort of play with, really. You know, I'm really going to be able to lay them down. So. here so put, put a bit of a layer of it down all over here 
There's actually almost like um, almost a bit of a line. softly against the line there really sorry that this is wobbling I'm going to have to find another way of setting it up um, so then underneath I think I'm going to go in with warm grey the one in this sort of small area here so I'm just going to gently sort of pulling this bit down and kind of blending it a bit so just across there like that and then there's also a little bit here actually and then in here again I think it's more I'm going to go with warm grey warm as a bit of a base layer and then go from there I think so just gentle circles round quite a light pressure I think I'm going to go in with a bit of, I don't know if you say nougat or nugget. <laughs> um, so this is just a real kind of, it's a nice subtle brown, quite a natural tone. So I'm just going to very lightly just bring a bit up to here. And then I'm going to go over it again with warm grey one just to kind of soften it off and blend it back down. just going to just stop the recording a sec I'm just going to try and reset um, how I've got the camera just so it's not shaking so much for you so um, just give me one sec okay sorry about that let's try uh, let's try this so um, yep yeah, so I've put the warm grey and the nougat down there very lightly and then underneath I'm going to go back in with Oh, I'm going to have to really think about setting this up again so um, yeah so let's go in with warm grey across the middle here just a light layer and then I think I'm going to go in with dark sepia because it is quite dark across here And sort of across this bit. I think I'm going to get the warm grey one and just sort of blend that down. Down here.
Again, just kind of lightly doing it, but then just going in slightly heavier when I go back over. This is quite a block, a bit of block colour here really. So we can go back over that and make that a bit darker again a little bit later. So there is actually a sort of lighter line. So this is just the warm grey one, sorry, warm grey one again. Just coming across here and just up slightly. And I'd say that's probably a slight bit of burnt ochre across here. Just very, very light though. I think it's a very subtle, subtle bit across here. And a little bit darker just off to the side. Okay, so we've gone back to <laughs> how we had the camera originally. So I kept knocking it. So I do apologise, I will get it right for the next one. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to very lightly round the edge of this, just brush a slight bit of burnt ochre. And then down here goes quite dark again so I think what I'm going to do is go in with a bit of warm grey one again so I'm kind of going to go over these lines I've put here because this whole area is dark but the lines are just going to sort of I'm then going to sort of put darker bits down so So just gently circling again just to get a base layer down. Just going in slightly heavier. Let's do another layer. Um, then I'm going to put a layer of burnt umber down, just lightly. There. I'm going to get the dark sepia just to mark out along the edge. And then just round here slightly. Not a lot, but just so there's a bit of definition there. Oh, excuse me, and then burnt umber down here. Okay. 
and then get the dark sepia again and just do a darker line down here and go across here with the bare number Heavier again. Okay. So I'm just going to go a bit darker with the burnt umber down the bottom here. Across here, and just slightly blending it up to here, um, and again the same here, going a bit darker from where I did the dark sepia area up here, and just heavier and heavier. And then just blend it down a bit. Okay. So I'm then going to go round the edge with the dark sepia of this area. Just if I feel the pencil is getting a bit soft and, and sort of thick I'm just turning it slightly to get the sharper edge as I go around and then what I'm going to do is just gentle just sort of fairly light sort of a meat well I suppose a medium pressure um, sort of sight circles off of that bottom line just so I'm sort of blending the dark sepia up a bit if that makes sense Light circles, just heavier as I go back along the bottom again. And then I'm going with the burnt umber again and sort of blend up fairly heavy pressure from that dark sepia. I'm going to take the dark sepia and sort of do a line again across here and then sort of do a slight blend down. Not as far though, just sort of slightly off the edge a bit like that. And then sort of a fairly clean line there. And then I'm going to go back in with the dark sepia on this area just go over it again a little bit heavier okay so then so right I think looking across across this line here I think I'm actually going to put a layer of ivory just down here And then get the burnt umber and just go down this line here. And then I think just kind of soften it in slightly. Just soften that so it's not kind of a hard edge line. And then go across with the ivy 
uh, sorry, not ivy, ivory. From here and then up. Light circles. Just to hang that, uh, just to lay that base layer down. Just going to go to this point, I think. I'm not going to go any further than that for now. And I'm going to get the burnt ochre again. And do a light layer over this whole area that I've just done with the ivory. And then let's get back over again and again a few times. And then gonna get the burnt umber again and the sort of a heavier bit just here. And uh, I think just a sort of a circle here. sort of soften it up and then circles just light circles along this top bit here and sort of slightly down and then I'm gonna get the burnt ochre again and I'm gonna just kind of go around the edge down the edge of that line and across here and then up this side and burnt umber And then here, there's sort of a bit of a heavier bit. This is the burnt umber again. A bit of a heavier bit of the line there. And sort of blur it across. And then there's sort of a bit of a thicker part across here. And then just sort of blend it softly off. I think I'm going to get the dark sepia and just go down this bit here and just slightly blending across, not all the way, just sort of slightly away from the line. And I think I might actually go in up here again as well with the dark sepia and just to kind of, excuse me, that Okay, sorry about that. I'm not sure how much of that end bit would have cut off then. My battery just died. Um, so I've just got the dark sepia and I'm going across the bottom here. Just going in slightly heavier and blending up. Just softening off from these harder edges at the side. Uh, I'm just going to go in with dark sepia just along this line here as well and just kind of do a bit of a squiggle. Again up here as well. Just doing these little things sort of as you see them. Just things you might not necessarily notice until you get further on and you look back. Um, And then I think we'll just do this bit here and then we'll blend all of this up, up to there. So I think I'm going to get warm grey one and what else do I want? 
and the sky blue I think for down here. So I think I'm just going to go right across these lines just here with warm grey warm. Just as a slight base layer. And then I think I'm going to get the cold grey one just down to here. Just put a base layer down there too. Okay. And I'm going to get the nougat again, I think. Or nugget, nougat, whatever you call it. And just gently go round the edge here. dark sepia because I just need to obviously darken off some of these lines that are coming down and then just soften off slightly from the edge there line here and just go a bit darker and just slightly sort of blend down from it. Barely notice it but it's just little bits like that that make the difference. Okay so I think I'm going to make this bit here, again this is all with the dark sepia, it's a little bit heavier. And I'm going to get the sky blue. And it's quite bright down this side here. So just gentle circular lines. And there's also a little bit just softly against this line here. Okay, um, back to the dark sepia, and I'm just going to sharpen it again actually just to sharpen the point so I can get a clean line along, along this edge here. So I'm going to go right from the top. it's quite sort of a hard quite a clean line have to be careful of that. down here and up through the lashes obviously we can sort them out after so this side and crisp this 
edge off slightly. And then I'm going to just gently, with the this, with this sort of soft circular motion, just put down a layer, a base layer of the dark sepia all over this bit. And then just keep gently, sort of slightly getting heavier with your pressure, going back over. You don't want to go in sort of too heavy straight away. You'll kind of get a feel of how you need to do it as you go, really. I think it's important as well, I <clears throat> just wanted to say that you don't put too much pressure on yourself um, when creating pieces, especially when it's for other people. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you're trying to create as realistic as possible, but you're not creating a photo and you're not recreating a photo either. So. The reference photo you're working from you know you're going to get it or you want to get it as close as you can but there are certain things that, you know you need to sort of add a bit of artistic license to and kind of you know kind of make your own so I wouldn't you know it's not going to be identical to the photo at the end of the day and um, you know I just think it's important to remember that you're not a camera <laughs> it's um you know, you're creating a piece of art at the end of the day. You're not you're not trying to reproduce the photo. I think it it can be easy to get hung up on that sometimes, but yeah, just just don't put too much pressure on. But again I go back to sort of what I was saying at the start about reference photos, you know, the better the photo the, the sort of easier it makes your job and better your you know better portrait you'll be able to create so it all comes down to the photo I do if there's people sort of fairly local when I say local I'd say within like an hour ish of me um if they're really struggling with a photo i will offer to go out um and take photos obviously to charge charge for that and i don't very often have to do that to be fair but i just think if people are fairly local and they're really struggling um yeah, it's nice to try and help if you can Again, just going in a bit heavier again as I go back over. Because this, although this paper can take a lot of layers, because it is fairly, if you guys find it, but it's fairly spongy. Um, so although it can take a lot of layers, you don't want to go in, like I said earlier, too heavy too soon. Um, it's a lot easier to just keep layering up. At the end of the day, colour pencil is a very slow medium and you know that's just how it is I'm afraid, but just 
working back up here slightly softening off that and then I think what I'm going to do is if you look at the reference photo it's a very dark area I'm going to get the black and um, sort of blend in a little bit with the black so I think from this kind of the middle of this darker area if I kind of I'm not going to put a line down but just kind of imagine there's a bit of a line there so I'm just gonna just lightly making sure it's really sharp just gently circling in with the black circling around the edge Just like the other layers as well, just kind of going back over. And I think actually, although I'm kind of doing my imaginary line down here, obviously it's going to be a bit darker under the lashes, so I'm just going to kind of go up here. Kind of through the gap in the bunch of lashes. Same up here. <coughs> Sorry, that's my dog sneezing, coughing. So again, I think this is this is something adding this black here, you know, you can't you don't necessarily like notice it as such, but it's kind of helps to give that roundness of the eyeball. Um you know, that's sort of the shading, isn't it? Although you can't really see it, it will actually make quite a difference. And I'm just gonna go in heavier back along here and then um, I'm going to just go along here a little bit more with the black as well, again just lightly putting it down. And I think I'm just going to, I'm just like sort of noticing little things as I go. So I'm just going to get warm grey too, I think. I can always up it if I need to. I'm just in this area here, sort of as I'm looking back at it, it's actually looking a bit darker um, than I thought. So just going gently in with the warm grey too. Hmm. I don't know if that's dark enough. Let's get the warm grey through. And I'm 
and then I'm just going to get the burnt umber and just softenly, oh, sorry, just gently sort of soften and blend it up a little bit. I'm just going to go get the black. Sorry, I'm just darting around this a little bit, but it's just, like I say, as you, as you go, you notice things a bit more, don't you? Actually, no, I'm going to get dark sepia, not black, for this bit. And just work down. Again, this area is actually darker. And I've put down so yeah just gently keep going over it and working over it I think I'm just going to get the black and just gently put a bit of darkness into it. Very, very gently working up. down here I'm just going to add a bit of darkness into this bit as well just gently just to add a bit of definition we go right round I think and then I'm going to go back to the dark sepia just to go across here softening up some of these lines I'm just going to um, this bit. I'm just going to go up here and just l put a layer of dark sepia down, sort of start of the eyelid. Now I'm going to keep looking at this. In fact, I just noticed something. Just um, keep coming back to it. So this is the burnt umber. darken this area and just soften these edges off The dark sepia. Okay. 
Okay, so the sky blue and the cold grey one. So I'm just going to go back across here and okay, actually, I'm going to go alongside here. I'll show you why in a bit. So, and then just through into this area here and get the sky blue. Just gently put this down. It's actually a bit more prominent. In fact, I think I'm going to grab another blue. I think I'm going to grab. Uh, so this is light cobalt, 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 turquoise, <coughs> and. Just put a bit down at the bottom here, I think. It kind of stands out. I can just sort of blend it up. And then I'm just going to get the black, but very, very gently do the lines across here. If you don't want to go in too heavy with that at all. Okay, and then I think dark sepia again. I do use this one a lot, it is really good. And so the lines we made earlier, I'm just going to go around them. So I put that line up there just because there's a very fine, very, very thin sort of line of white. Sorry, wobbling you again. Okay, so <clears throat> this area, excuse me, this area here, so I'm just going to put the layer of dark sepia down. Gentle, soft, light pressure circles. Going back over a little bit heavier. And it's kind of a smooth area, um, and obviously no hair strokes, sort of circular motion, sort of smooth out the colour a bit. So, you know, there will be times, it's so different doing an eye, but when you're doing sort of a whole portrait, that I just think you've really got to remember to just trust the process because, you know, you can think, oh, 
God, this isn't looking right. Um, you know, it's just, it's just not how I thought it was going to be. But, it, you know, you've just got to trust it, power through it, and not really, like, pay too much attention to it until, you know, further towards the end. Because they go through an ugly stage, for sure, where, you know, it just doesn't really look how it's supposed to look because obviously you're building it up you've got to remember you're building a portrait um you know it's not going to look like it and it's not going to look real from the start you've got to trust the process Okay, so we'll go back in again a bit heavier later. But I'm just going to go down here with this bit. This goes a bit grey blue off from here so I'm not going to work on that for now I'm just going to go up to this bit so I'm going to get cold grey I'm actually going to get cold grey 2 I think um, no 3 cold grey 3 sorry and I think I'm just going to work this is like a lighter bit here which we'll work on in a minute I'm just going to gently put a layer of cold grey 3 down. I'm going to go like oh, like on the line, if that makes sense, rather than up to it because that line actually doesn't really exist as such, it's just showing me like the boundary. So I've put those layers down there. Okay, I think I'm gonna get Payne's Grey. Um, use this one a lot as well. If I can find it, has it gone? Um, so this is basically like a dark bluey grey. So I'm actually gonna go around, just sort of around the edges of this area with the panes grey um, I'll show you why in a sec it's just gentle circular a soft sort of line of it 
around the outside and the inside here as well. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is get the. Actually, I'm just going to just go slightly further in on this outer edge. I'll just blend down slightly. And then I've done that because I'm then going to work in the middle with the black, but it kind of will soften out to the Payne's Grey so that it's not a severe line of black. So I'm just going to gently use the flatter side of the edge, just gently start to mark down the black. And just soften off from it slightly as you go, just to keep it softer. Remember, you can always go in heavier afterwards, but like I've said before, it's easier to make it darker than it is lighter, so you're better off just kind of marking it down, you know, too lightly almost, and then, and then going in and making it heavier and darker. Sorry, I'm conscious of blocking, blocking what I'm doing, but I'll try, try to keep out the way. going to go a bit heavier at the middle. Heavier pressure. Now you've got some layers down. You can afford to to be a bit heavier with it, and then soften off again from the edge. Sorry, really wobbling now. I'm so sorry about this. wobble it too much. Okay, and then so this bit here is a much lighter grey contrast that will blend, will then blend both sides into it so I think I'm going to go in with cold grey one 
um, to put the base layer down. Then I'm going to get the cold grey three. Sorry, just turn my top. Um, and just gently, sort of across the line of the dark, sort of soften in. And then go across the middle as well with um, just working on the edges. And then I think I'm going to get the Payne's Grey again and then go in, sorry, oh, keep locking the camera, um, let's go in a bit darker from here and to the, um, to the black line here bit darker down the bottom and just work up black just because um, I want to put a bit of definition of the line in and there's also a um, line here so going like that, a bit of a crease in the eyelid Just get the panes grey again. Just working alongside that black line just to slightly, very, very slightly soften it off. I'm going to go in a bit darker here where I blend it up. And I think I'm actually going to do a bit of a circular sort of soften, softening line with the paint's grey this is still um, and just slightly up from the bottom line Cars. I'm then going to go in with the cold grey one onto the lashes so I'm going to leave the lines in for the lashes 
and just to get a base layer down. And then I think I'm going to get cold grey three again. I'm going to make sure it's really sharp because um, obviously you're doing sort of quite fine detail now. So just gonna. So if you look at the lashes, the sort of sort of like clumps of lashes, aren't they? The lines aren't the lines of the lashes aren't right down through the clumps so if you look they're actually just sort of coming from the edge so and not all the way through if that makes sense and then just up slightly from the bottom and then we do the same on the others as well there's quite a dark patch here on this bit so I won't go too heavy, but just so there's a bit of a base base with those. And again along here. And then I'm gonna, I think I'm going to get the Payne's grey again, just to make sure it's really sharp. And then I'm going to use, so uh, where you've got the sort of flat edge, if you can see. So I'm going to use the sharper edge on this. Sorry, you might not be able to see it very clearly. <laughs> um, I'm just going to come down like this. on this side just slightly um, again on this one and not so much on these more from the top make sure you know you need if you need to turn the pencil to make sure you get obviously the sharper edge then just keep turning I'm going to get the black. I'm not really going to use a lot of it, it's just. In fact, sorry, paint grey. <laughs> I'm going to come down with the softer, flatter edge just slightly. Because this sort of clump of lashes is actually quite dark. Okay, and then I'm going to get the black and just go off this edge okay and then I'm not really going to go any further with the black I think I'm then going to get dark indigo um, just to add it in sort of in between a little bit Ok, 
Kate and Ben, it probably isn't going to make that much difference, but um, this is really handy to have in your kit as well. So this is a slice tool. This is just great for adding in fine details. Now I have heard that on this paper it doesn't work as well, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. So just very, very lightly, just sort of basically scratching off the surface basically. So yeah, I don't know if you can see there. Just to add a bit more definition. Now you can only really use this once there's a few layers down because otherwise there isn't really anything for it to scratch off. So yeah, see like there where obviously there's not really many layers. Just gonna get the black just to kind of crisp up. Around these. going to go back down with the black here just to blacken this off because it is quite quite, a, um, quite a heavy block layer of the black here. Uh, I'm just going to get the burnt umber again I've just noticed along here um, probably just need to soften it off a bit more see where the burnt oak is showing through it's not looking at the reference photo it's not showing through quite as much as I've left it so again this is why we don't go in too heavy with it um, like I keep saying it's easier to make it darker so it's much better than looking back and going oh god I've gone too far with it um, again a bit heavier here I think I'm actually because there's a few layers down it's not sort of taking it that well so I think I'm going to get the dark sepia. Um, this is the brownie black I keep using. And just gently, I think this might darken it off a bit better. gone a bit heavy there and it's just kind of scratched some of the fibres of the paper off is where you've got to be careful although it takes a lot of layers like I was saying before you need to go with lots of lighter layers to build it up that's a bit better and then I'm just going to get the burnt ochre although I've said I'm kind of covering a bit more of it up actually a bit more a bit of an orange bit just showing through a bit more there okay and so then I think I'm just going to come back down to the bottom for now and then we'll come back up here in a minute so I'm going to get the paints grey I think just make sure it's really sharp And I'm just going to, so obviously as you can see on the reference photo, there's actually a white or whitey blue line of light down here. 
So just being very, very aware of leaving that in. So I'm just going to go down with the Payne's Grey. Across here. along this edge because it's going to be blended out anyway and then through the lashes the sharper edge And then just put a layer, surface layer down, a uh, base layer down. And this outer edge is just a lot softer. So I shall join this bit up with the cold grey in a sec. Um, it's going to crisp the line up a bit along here. Just going to go in a bit heavier back over again. Okay, and then we need to get my cold grey one. Come back to that bit in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm going to get the cold grey one, uh, one along here, the base layer. Cold grey three, I think, and just work down, just slightly blending down from here. And then I'm going to get the black. Make sure it's really sharp. Just add. line in along here
And then I'm going to get Payne's grey again just for now because I just don't want to go in too heavy just to put the line down here because it's quite a fairly clean line. Um, but yeah, I'll just go in with this first and then I can always go over it with the black if I need to. Okay, so I don't mean to do that. So I'm just going to get, this is where the mono eraser that I was telling you about comes in quite handy because I shouldn't have put that bit there. So I'm not going to rub too hard, I'm just going to take the rest of it out, I'm going to get the cold grey one again. and sharp because you want to add a bit of definition here with the lashes I'm just going to add like a base layer of the black down first. So not going in too heavy. So I'm not going to take the black right to the end because it actually sort of softens off there. So I'm going to take it to like there, I think. Okay, so... Sorry, my battery cut out again. So I'm just going along here with the black lower down and then just kind of blending up to it being slightly lighter the cold grey, I'm going to get cold grey 2 if I can find it, um, just, add it in here a bit, and cold grey 3, just work it up. And then go back with the black again. Just very, very lightly.
Okay. Right, and then I'm just going to get the sky blue because um, it's just the odd little sort of patch of it um, along here. And then I'm going to get the Payne's Grey because it's just sort of slight, I think it's just hairlines just. Okay, and then goes a bit darker in from here as well. I think I'm just going to get a cold grey four, I think. And just slightly darken this area here. Okay, and then I'm just going to check. I'm happy with that. I'll go back down here as well because I forgot to darken this off. And then I just, oh, I'm going to get the warm grey three. Um, just for this area. Um, and then the paint's grey actually. Okay, so I think I'm just going to get the, I think I'm fairly happy with that, but I'm just going to get the Payne's Grey and just sort of darken off the lashes a bit. I think I've left them a bit too light. Um, 
Um, I get the warm grey three as well. Uh, sorry, cold grey three as well. And oh, earlier I think as well. I'm just going to soften a bit across there. So said about the slight lash lines across here, didn't I? So I think I'm going to actually use the black for this, although I'm just going to very gently, very lightly. So I'm going to come right down from where the lashes come from, just so it seems a bit more natural. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. Um, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, Gemma Dilks Art, um, on my website, uh, which is www.gemmadilksartist.co.uk. Um, please get in touch. I'll also, please subscribe, like and share. And I'll see you for the next one. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.